This Juliet is in desperate need of another Romeo because she doesn't have enough Romeo in her life. So this is the new Romeo that this Juliet got. Isn't he beautiful? Look at that. Big, gorgeous, beautiful. These are my new plant hole and I'm just soaking them. So I put them in here overnight just so they can absorb some moisture and be happy again. So different ones here. Some of them repeat, but I just want to show you this hairy, hairy one. Also this pink one. That's Galptopitalum, pink rose. Oh, look how pink that is. It's like a ghost plant, only pink. <laughs> well, the shape is the same as a ghost plant, but this one is Tradescancia Silamontana Varigata. Look how cute that is. It's beautiful. And also, this is the reason, okay, one of the reason I bought some more plants again, because there's this hybrid. We no name. I don't know what your name is, but you're beautiful and I love you. Look at that. Look at the the symmetry of the plant. It's just beautiful. So it's an echeveria of something, or maybe it could be a Graptoveria, who knows, with so many hybrids and it's about to flower, so I get to know or find out <laughs> what sort you are. Are you a hybrid or well, it is a hybrid, but I'm not sure whether it's a Graptoveria or Pachyveria or Graptosidum or Echeveria sedum. Who knows? Oh, look at this one. This is Satos Red, I think, the lithops. It's so cute. It's so red. That's just a preview of what I'm doing. So I'm going to be potting them up and I am going to show you also the reasons why I bought these ones. These are mine that I've grown. Look at that gorgeous. Look at that beautiful, beautiful. So that one is just a beautiful red velvet. I'm forgetting my plants. So beautiful, gorgeous, fat red velvet. 27 degrees in this beautiful spring day and so things are warming up. And so things needs to be moving up or down. And that's what I've been doing the last couple of days. And most of the Ionium, I had a few Ioniums that were here. I moved them around. I still don't know where I'm going to put my uh, something tea. <laughs> I forgot the name, but I will write it down. Sweet tea are made of these. And this is my new acquisition. This is a crested... Pulvinata, hairy one. Oh, hairy one. Oh, look, bees. Oh, I love it when I see bees. But anyway, things are moving up and down, as I said before. Now, my Orostachis, which was variegated before, has lost its variegation, being grown indoors. I don't know why, but hopefully it will come back. I think it's slowly, look, <gasps> it's flowering. But, look, there's a few variegated coloring. Oh, even here, look, I can see some coloring coming out now again. And hopefully they grow a bit bigger because they're a bit on the slim side, having been dieted indoors. Oh, look at this beautiful fatness getting fatter and fatter and fatter. <laughs> My something snow, snow bum. <laughs> snow peach or whatever. It's not snow peach. Oh my goodness, I, I forgot the name. Snow candy. I should have said candy. Sweet tea and sweet candy. It's no candy. A lot of the Agavoides needs to be moved. So this Elizabeth here, which is also an Agavoides hybrid, has to get out of the sun because it's starting to go green. So a lot of the Agavoides variety doesn't like being... Okay, I'll put you over here down below and so as this Angela. Angela used to be beautiful and red like the reddest part here during cold weather but now it doesn't like the sun so I think this one I'll just move it over to the other side. On this side here things are looking beautiful. Oh my goodness that is um, changing that bluebird. The color if you look at that Oh my goodness, it's so pristine, it's so almost ethereal, like the gods, isn't it? Like in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> it 
beautiful. Munro. Oh, it's very common now and cheap, cheap, cheap. But if you haven't got a Munro, I highly suggest getting a Munro. They're very easy to grow and they are so always beautiful. Doesn't matter what season it is, they're gorgeous. But be on the lighter side when it comes to watering. So I put some calcite in that and knowingly that is going to absorb the moisture but it's making this beautiful plant look even more beautiful Ta -da! this is what I see now when I come here uh, I'm doing a video of Romeo beautiful Romeo of course so She's going to stay here for now, or here, it's a here, isn't it? <laughs> but anyhow, all most of my yoniums are here, and then now, every time I come here, oh my goodness, for the last two days, I don't get any work done. I just admire this beautiful ionium. Oh, look at them. Oh, so gorgeous. And they will color up much nicely in here as well. So all the ones that are hiding I've taken out and there's another one I put somewhere I can't remember where I put it but anyway oh yes look at them oh look oh a ball of I think Mardi Gras and Big Bang so this Mardi Gras here I'm just curious because the Mardi Gras I've grown from leaf doesn't look like that at all it's inside and it's so ever gorgeous I mean, we're gonna go back and have a sneak peek later on but for now oh hang on look at this pink witch oh Oh my goodness, look how beautiful you are! Oh. Okay, I'm sure you're going to gush over it as well, but I don't know whether it's going to die or it's going to color up because it was much pinkier before when I had it over on the other side there, but now the color is popping out. And yes, of course, that one in the bottom is also pink witch, and this one is Medusa. That is huge. It's getting... Look at my hand. I'm still holding Angela here. That is a big plant, and I didn't expect it to be that big, but it's putting out babies in the bottom as well, so I'm not touching them. And the other ones are all different variety of Ioniums. And that one, I love that one. It's called a firecracker. It's such a firecracking plant. And you, my immortal ink, uh, wrinkle. It's supposed to be wrinkly, and I think they grow really big, these ones as well. So many plants! Oh, it's a wonder I get anything done. And speaking of getting anything done, do you see this contraption here? I'm just going to go from the bottom. Okay. And going up slowly to the top. So this is... Now I've added on to my collection here. <laughs> Look, all the way up the top, I still have two that or one actually both sides I can do both sides actually one side only one this side and one on the other side there but anywho what are you honey pink up the top I want to see if that honey pink is gonna fade and so as this one here in the bottom here I put a honey pink here as well this one I thought it might be variegating so that's why I want to keep an eye on it but Anywho, and look how beautiful that Anacamsero sunrise. Seed grown, so this is my own very special seed grown ones. Okay, I'll take this one here at the top. Oh, look, they're gorgeous, beautiful, beautiful. So one seed pod <laughs> can produce a lot of babies. So I think, hang on, I'll show you where the mummy is. So this seed pod here, like that, if that is actually uh, pollinated or the bees sort of uh, played with it, but it's only uh, one and I think it's dying from being exposed to the sun. I just moved that there and I didn't realize that the afternoon sun actually is hitting this seed pod, but it doesn't matter. You understand what I mean? You can grow plants from seed like this. So when it dries up and before, it will actually go white before it opens up to release the seed. That's the time to harvest them and plant them and straight away it will produce beautiful anacamsero sunrise like this ones. This is just so simple. This uh, contraption here, I got this from Kmart a long time ago. I've had this for about four years now and they were three dollars and I took the lot for the last sale. So it's one, two, three, four, five, not the lot. I think I only got like a dozen or something like that. <laughs> anyway, it's a per Perfect contraption to hold. Okay, look, another honey pink. I think this one is sort of variegating. Hang on, getting distracted. Anyway, I'll take this one then. Now, 
something easy. Oh, I forgot. Oh, that one is fine. I was gonna find a white pot, but I forgot. Okay, it's a bit tight. I've done it tight, but anyway. Oh, that one could go back here because that's loose. So you can see what I've done here. I just tied up wire from one side to the other side to fit this, of course, the size of whatever pot you're going to be using. So that's what I've done here. But now it's created more space for me to put my <laughs> succulents in. Well, actually, a lot of these are propagation. So you can see here the variegated ones. What are you? I need to look at the label. Ghost plant, that's a ghost plant, Graptopithalum. Now this one is red wine, variegated, red wine peach, variegated. That one is not my propagation. I actually bought it and separated it and just so happened there's uh, one or two that's sort of variegating. This Chihuahua Yensis, variegated, is from a leaf. I've grown this myself. And so uh, this is actually my mother plant. When I started, it was like about that big there. I was given a tiny little cutting, but anyway. So this one as well, it was only small. From small things, bigger things grow, of course. Now, also on the other side here, before I forget, I'm already here. This sedum burro's tail. So morganianum, I think. So did I get it right? I don't know, it doesn't matter. But anyway, this one all went yellow from the frost, got hit by the frost. And I thought it almost died. But this is a very special one because this was given to me by a friend of mine. The ones that I was growing before, I just let them die with the frost because there's no point I uh, that for me anyway to grow them because it's just harrowing. Every time the frost hits them, my heart breaks but this one was given to me by my friend Jem, Jemmy Jem, Jem Jem. <laughs> That's why I have to keep it alive and then so you can see sort of yellowing there. Most of them look like that and then this thing started growing. It extended so I only have about less than two inches long. Now it's grown bigger and fatter the tip as well. The new growth is much bigger. I think it took about five months before they sprouted to this size. So it took a long time and it's also winter so which is not the growing season and I had them growing inside under the grow light of course. But without the grow light I don't think they would have germinated or sprouted or produced pups. Anyway this one now I've got another one up here, but this one I think is Kanihini, so this is a different variety of burro stale, or maybe that's the big, the big one, because the burrito is smaller and cuter. In this corner, weighing one, two, three, four, five, six, I'm talking about these pots here that I've done. This is a good idea as well, so I've doubled it, so there you go. This is what's going on. So I put a hole, okay, uh, it's, uh, on top, lined up to the bottom and I wired it through. And then I put the pot, of course, and wired it through there. And then now that way it's more stable and they can go in there. And I still have a couple more to go in here. I got three more, I see three more pots. And this one's already got holes. There you go. I heated up my little needle and poke it through so I can put another one here, another one there, and another one there. So I can put three more plants that can be exposed to the sun. So maybe my Bing Ling over here, I love that plant, don't know why, and it's flowering. So the aphids, I just have to remove that one. Keep an eye. Well, I try to keep an eye on the ones that I want to get some seeds from and uh, remove the aphids from it. The butcher bird has been flying in here and attacking uh, the nectar of the flowers. So this one, this is flying cloud variegated. This is already broken off. See, look, it broke it off there. And so I just put a wire on it because I want to save the seeds for that one. And also, hopefully, I want to see if I harvested the leaves, <laughs> if they grow pups. And also, I just look over on that side there, and the rotten bird has actually broken another stem. Look what it did. Oh, my goodness. It's a good thing I'm not saving uh, the flowers on my champagnes because they grow easily from leaves. But anyway, see this one now, but it doesn't have aphids, but I thought this would be a good uh, plant to cross-pollinate it with something, but I'm not going to be doing that anymore. And the ones I really want to get hold of seeds from is this one here, the uh, 
What is your name? German Champagne. Because I just love, love, love. Are you German Champagne? But it's still got a red center, isn't it? So I think it's German Champagne. I don't know what the next one is. But anyway, yep, that's my biggest German Champagne. That has a different flower as well. It's red. So, so this one is a tiny German Champagne. I think the Champagnes, their growing seasons is mostly when it gets cold. And when it does get hot, they go to sleep. They go night night. I'll put you here so I'll, I'll remember when I come back here later on. If I don't, that's it. Okay. So I have to get the leaves and how about I just do that now? So there you go. I'll take the leaves and hopefully this will grow. I'm going to scatter it in here. Oopsie. Oh, look how beautiful that mulan is. Nice color. Anyway, I'm actually growing some mulan inside. They actually grow quite fast. So another red champagne grown from a leaf. Look, that one there. And it got attacked by fungus. And now it's got new growth as well. Oh, one of the jelly jam sort of rotted as well, but the rest are still good. It actually rotted because it was dry. So I just watered it yesterday and then now she's settling down and seems to be happy. Anywho, beautiful flowers. I was gonna bring it inside, this one, but I kept forgetting and as my last goodbye, I'll show you the um, Ionium inside as well, how it's nice and fat, it's so cute. Anyway, I already got my tomato planter here. I still haven't finished. This one's gonna go outside now. And I really miss my tomatoes uh, planted properly because last year it was a disaster. I didn't get that much tomatoes from it, my yellow tomato. So I'm getting two, a yellow, oh, I'm getting planting yellow tomato, the big one, the heritage one, and also a honey one. And also my cuca melon, I have to uh, replace the soil. Anyway, that's all I've got for you, my lovelies. I'm going to have to go to the recycling now, so... Uh, also, oh my goodness, see, I see the flower. I see some flowers. Beautiful. The palmeri is flowering. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Anyway, bye for now. I'll see you on the next video. Also, don't forget to put your shade cloth or even your curtains up for those succulents that you want protected during these hot summer nights. Days, actually. No, even in spring. Our temperature is going to rise up here in Australia. And look, i got more anacamceras growing there. They're so cute when they're little. The color is just so intense. Look at that. Anyway, so bye for now. I'll see you in October. Because <laughs> it is now the 29th of September. Happy anniversary to my darling and my me. <laughs> it's our wedding anniversary. Okay, bye for now. I'll see you in the next video. Oh my goodness, this is another video. You have to wait and see what it's all about. Don't mind the sticky paper there. Look how many fungus nuts are already captured. Now, this madiga grown from a leaf. Look how compact it is. And also the colors. And look at that. The leaves are really fat, like really thick. I could feel its thickness. So it's concentrated on the center instead of having the length of going out because the soil is limited and also the water, that's the important part. They're hardly getting any water because I'm letting them dry up and soak them and dry up and soak. And now it's produced really, really, really fat. Ionio Mardi Gras. Isn't that gorgeous? Even the small one here is quite thick thicker than the usual Mardi Gras which has got sort of a thin and flimsy leaf but in even this one here look at that this is actually the first one that grown big for me but then these other two just took over so out of 17 I've got three a one two three Mardi Gras and this Euphobia obesa which is a sun loving plant has gone uh, yellowy orange and it's about to bloom 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 now i'm gonna put it in place of the what do you call that planet angela <laughs> i forget my so many plants i'm getting a headache but anywho now you can i don't know we're gonna stay here or there i move you there and move these fat ones what is your name i think you are uh, avant-garde fat one 
Look, it's so cute. But anyway, I'll move you here and I can put another one in here. So any plant that are sun loving uh, can be moved here. And also that Ionium Zeus has to be taken out of there because that's not going to handle the heat of summer especially very well. I have to put that somewhere a little bit cooler and so as these two other ones in here. This one as well, I need to take it out of the sun. Best doing this first thing in the morning, it's the middle of the day right now, but it's still okay because I've got a shade cloth here and the midday sun is sort of hitting it on the edge of the pot here, but it's already going away. So as the day moves on, well today, the sun is gonna be away from this spot and it's gonna be afternoon shade and the sun will hit afternoon over on that side. So from this area on my hand to where the this um, thing is uh, it will be in the shade will it be bright but sort of shaded so that's a perfect spot to put this beautiful plant and this one apparently I bought it because of the flower Econoserios uh, Morikali look $25 I paid for it but it's worth uh, for me to see that flower I want to see the flower in person 